welcome to the first episode of my new video series called By the Numbers. In this series, I'll look at the upcoming Vikings opponent and examine their stats and look at their strengths and also their weaknesses. So let's start this off with looking at the Seattle Seahawks by the numbers. So the very first thing we'll look at is the, on the offensive side of the ball. Overall, they have the ninth ranked offense, scoring 26.6 points a game. And they get 353.2 yards a game, which is 19th. Passing the football, you'll see one of their weaknesses where they get 204.4 pass yards a game, which drops all the way down to 26. But their biggest strength, on the other hand, is running the football, which is 148.8 rush yards a game, which is first. And now that we've seen the big picture stats, let's look at some of the individual stats. And since they have such a good running game first, as a matter of fact, let's start there. And let's start off by looking at their running backs. So, and whenever you have the number one running game, you would expect a workhorse. The Adrian Peterson, the Marshawn Lynch, the Chris Johnson when he was good. You would expect that one guy to carry the workload and get the 15 to 1800 yards at all pro. But that's not what the Seahawks have. It's very much running by committee. And they do it very well by using the hot hand as we will see in a moment. The, the number one runner is Chris Carson who has 157 carries for 704 yards and 4 touchdowns on the year. But that might not be very impressive, but it has some very splashy runs on the year, starting at home against Detroit, where he has uh, 32 carries for 102 yards. Uh, at LA, that he had 19 carries for 116, and at Detroit, he had 25 for 105. Three games where he had over 100 yards. The number two runner is Mike Davis. He's at 90 carries for 396 yards and also three touchdowns. And he had one 100-yard game at Arizona where he had 101 on 21 carries and also two touchdowns. But the guy that they want to maybe turn into that workhorse is their first-round pick, Rashad Penny, who's come on as of late and been very good too where at LA he had 108 yards on 12 carries so they have three runners that have uh, at least 100 yard game so you don't know who to is the guy you want to take out of the game all three three different running styles very hard to defend they all get their carries and the Seahawks use their hot hand very well so now that we know their running game is very dangerous and very hard to defend let's look at the passing game and of course starting off with the quarterback Russell Wilson who on the year has been very very good 29 touchdowns to only five interceptions has thrown for 2716 yards with a rating of 115.5 uh, their passing numbers weren't off the charts but when they need Russell. He's been very, very good on the year. At Carolina, he threw for 339 yards, two touchdowns. At home against the 49ers, didn't get, get the yards. Only 185, but four touchdowns on the day. So, this isn't an offense where Russell has to be the guy, but he's of course been the guy in the past, so he's got the gene, almost the Drew Brees style, where he, they will run the ball, that's their game, but when they need the quarterback to be the superstar, to be the leader, he'll be the guy to get the yards. But let's look at Russell's weapons. His number one receiver this year is Tyler Lockett, who has had only 44 receptions on the year for 700, 713 yards, but nine touchdowns. So as you see, he's not a consistent yard, yard eater. Uh, he's only had one game over 100 yards. That was at Carolina, where he had 107 and a touchdown. And he was close at home against LA, where he had 98. But he's had some very big lows, of course including a 22-yard performance against the Chargers, 34 at Detroit, 52 at for the 49ers. So he's not a super consistent guy. This is a guy that defenses can get rid of, but he's always a consistent touchdown threat with those nine touchdowns in only 13 games. So in the red zone, definitely a guy to look out, look out for. Yeah, that's the guy Russell wants to throw the ball to in the end zone. Uh, Doug Baldwin is usually their number one receiver but this year he's been battling injuries so he's only at 37 receptions for 388 yards and two touchdowns uh, he is he missed uh 
two games early in the year and was very limited in the first week, uh, but has come out as of late, and week nine uh, against the Chargers, he had four receptions for 77 yards, and at Oakland, he had six for 91, so he hasn't gotten going yet, especially the last couple of weeks where he's regressed quite a bit, where at the 49ers, he only had 22 yards, and at Carolina, he only had 39, so he's maybe not the biggest threat as he used to be, uh, but still, when Russell needs the first downs, he's kind of their guy. So on the defensive side of the ball for Seattle, big picture. They are the 10th ranked defense, averaging 21.6 points a game given up. But they do give up yards. 367.4 yards a game is 20th. 250.7 pass yards a game is 19th. And 116.8 rush yards a game is 17th. Uh, so let's look at some of their best players and starting off with their number one sack artist defensive end Frank Clark who's at 27 tackles on the year 10 sacks three fourth fumbles and also an interception uh, this is their number one sack artist at only 10 so that goes to show they aren't the best team at getting pressure on the year they are the 17th team as far as getting sacks at 31 uh, so uh, their defensive line isn't the best as far as getting after the passer but second level they have one of the best players in the league at linebacker Bobby Wagner, who is leading the team with 99 tackles. He also has a sack, two forced fumbles, and an interception. He's one of the best pass defending linebackers in the league and goes to show. And their number one corner is Shaquille Griffin, who has had 43 tackles and only two interceptions. The Seahawks used to be known for their backfield but this year not quite as good as it used to be but still solid it is six in the league as far as getting interceptions at 12 so still very solid but doesn't have those superstars that we're all used to playing in the back end of the seattle seahawks so this was the seattle seahawks by the numbers uh, next i'll be giving you guys the injury report to see which one of these guys might be hurt on both sides and with the seahawks and the vikings and also the key matchups to neutralize and defeat the Seahawks. Stay tuned, we'll see you guys next time.